forget to memorize this and write it 15 times. Welcome to the coolest, hippest, half hour of fun on TV. This is Brain Stew with Jennifer Pulley. Here's what we're whipping up for Brain Stew this week. We go full throttle ahead to the Virginia Air and Space Museum to talk about aerodynamics. Plus, we go inside a wind tunnel at NASA. We've got it all on Brain Stew. Don't touch that remote. <laughs> Virginia Air and Space Center in Hampton. Perfect. We're talking today about aerodynamics. Aerodynamics. Aero kind of sounds like air, doesn't it? Well, it is kind of like air. Mm, kind of. Aerodynamics is the study of how objects, buildings, trucks, cars, people, spacecraft, objects behave in moving air, air that is moving around them. That's what aerodynamics is. Are you sure? Aerodynamics is the study of how objects behave in moving air, like my hair is moving. Air, air, it runs. I get it, I get it. And we're gonna go inside and we're gonna talk to somebody today who can give us a little bit more information on aerodynamics. I'm not the expert, but I found some people who are. Let's go in and check it out. with my friend Dave. How you doing? Hey, pretty good. How are good. you? Good. I have a question. I'm just dying to ask you. All right. What's aerodynamics? Um, aerodynamics is a study of how objects interact in a fluid like the atmosphere. You know, objects such as airplanes or cars. So cars are aerodynamic? Sure. Sure. So our birds or buildings can have aerodynamic properties. Anything that interacts in a fluid like, uh, like the atmosphere has an aerodynamic property. Planes are so big, how do they ever get off the ground? Well, airplanes, um, there are basically four forces, four principles of flight that apply to an airplane um, that allow the airplane to get off the ground. Okay. They're lift, drag, thrust, and gravity. And basically it's a balance of those forces mm -hmm. that allows an airplane to get off the ground. Gravity, which affects everything, people, uh, cars, airplanes, um, dogs, cats, everything. Yeah tries to roll an object down to the yeah. center of the earth and towards yeah. the ground. Thrust is the force, the forward force that is created by the airplane's engines. Um, drag is a force of friction and it's the same force that you feel if you put your arm out of the car window and feel, feel it, it resistance, uh -huh. it's a friction. And the last force, lift, is created by, the, by a special part of the airplane called the wing. And the wing of an airplane is shaped, is a special shape called an airfoil. And that airfoil allows lift to, to be generated as air is passing over the wing. And as air goes over that wing, it creates lift. And that lift, once it starts to exceed the force of drag and gravity, the airplane rises into the air. So the bigger the airplane, the bigger the wings. True. Right? True. Okay. 
Um, and does this same principle apply to birds? Absolutely. The difference between a bird and an airplane is that a bird doesn't have an engine and yeah. it has to use its wings to flap, but the flapping creates a thrust um, which also generates the lift, so it's the same principle applies. Okay, explain to me, um, this is a U.S. Army helicopter That's right. and a real one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How does this baby get off the ground? Okay. The same principles that uh, apply to an airplane apply to a helicopter as well. There are four forces acting on it, lift, drag, thrust, and gravity. Um, and unlike the one part that's missing in this, um, or that, that isn't obvious, is that there's no wing, but there really is a wing, and that's the rotor blades. The rotor blades are shaped um, like airfoils. They're airfoils, just like the wing of an airplane. And what happens is, as the engine of the helicopter swings those blades around, they begin to generate lift as air is passed over them. The engine is up there. The and engine's in the middle of the helicopter, and it turns the, uh, the rotor shaft, which swings those blades around. The faster they go, the more lift they generate. Okay, I see these two like little wings here on the back. Um, they're shaped similar, but they're kind of inverted. They're flat on the top and round on the bottom. And that's different from what we were seeing down there. What do they do? Okay, do those are, are horizontal stabilizers, and they you'll see that same type of part on every aircraft in the building, whether it's an airplane or a helicopter. And it allows the pilot to control the pitch or the angle of the nose of the helicopter uh, or the airplane as it's in flight. Okay, we've shuttled on over from Air and Space Center to NASA Langley Research Center here in Hampton. I'm here with my friend Jeanette. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, I'm doing, I'm doing well. We are in um, a wind tunnel. Mm -hmm. what, first, what's a wind tunnel? A wind tunnel is a tubular structure where you can control the flow around the aircraft model. And this way, instead of having an airplane move through the air, you have the airplane fixed in a test section. And by controlling the speed of a motor, you can control the speed of the air that goes across the wind tunnel. This tunnel, for example, goes from 50 miles per hour to 630 miles per hour. Right. Now, what did, so you said that, that wind tunnels are used to test airplanes then? Is that right. basically what, what we're doing? Right. Are all airplanes tested here at NASA Langley? Research? Um, not necessarily at NASA Langley, but actually at one period of history around World War II, almost every single airplane that went into combat service was tested at NASA Langley Research Center. And so we've got this um, high-speed 7 by 10 foot wind tunnel. What does 7 by 10, I know it's 7 by 10, that's not a very big space, uh -huh. so is that all we're going to see? Well, the 7 by 10 feet refers to the size of the test section. And I'll show you on this diagram. Uh -huh. This is a schematic of the tunnel. When we walk through, we'll be going to see a model with a test section. And that's and the only place where they test the plane then? Right, and that's what's 7 by 10 feet. Okay, and, th and then here's the motor then, I guess. This is the motor, uh -huh. and this is just, and the wind in this tunnel is just going around and around, or well, actually this way. Yeah. Just around and around, that's all it's doing. And right. we're just, and the test section is just this small area right here. Right. Is there any way that we can see that? Yeah, I can take you in there right now. Oh, great, thanks. Okay. All right, well, now before we go right into the test section, I see some models around here of airplanes. Mm -hmm. What are these used for? These are tested in various tunnels here at Langley Research Center. These two models, for example, were tested in a 30 by 60 foot tunnel that was on the east side of the facility. So a much bigger tunnel than right. what we're about to see. And there's about 30 tunnels here at NASA Langley Research Center that test different speed areas. Well, they're not going to turn it on when we go in there, are they? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Alright, we're in the 7 by 10 foot. I see 7 by 10. This is cool. Okay, now, explain this contraption here to me. This is an aircraft model, an example of something that would have been tested here in the tunnel, and it's mounted on a sting. And by mounting it on this type of apparatus, you can get measurements taken through wires and sent back to a computer to analyze. In addition to being able to just take data, with this you can also change the angle of attack. We can actually take it and point it this way, we can point it up, right. we can point it down. Okay, I think I've got it so far. I understand the model and all that. What what gets this tunnel going? I mean, what's the heart of this tunnel? Hey, do you want to come see? Yeah, is it the motor? Yeah. What are these things we're getting ready to come into? These are turning vanes, and what they do is they help keep the air more evenly distributed across the, the tunnel section. And we're just going to walk right through them. Right. All right. 
All right, so we're, we're coming on to uh, another turning vein, I guess. I don't know. Actually, these are acoustic baffles. They help dampen out what are called pressure pulses and those show up as noise in the test section in data. Notice how the, these baffles really do take out a lot of the sound. Especially oh, if you like clap muffled. or something, you can hardly hear it. Doesn't echo like it used to. Right, it's a dramatic difference compared to how much it echoes in there. And this is the motor and the fan assembly. It's 14,000 horsepower, and it can be varied from zero to 485 revolutions per minute. It can vary from 50 to 630 miles per hour. And you get that by by varying the speed of the motor. So as you can see, if you wanted to test at different speeds, it's easier just to put a model in here and change the speed of the motor than it would be to get a model and to you know, fly up to 500 miles per hour. Sure, and you know, I guess it's cheaper too to, right. to make a model than it is to, to build a real plane and test the real thing when you can test the model. So this, this whole wind tunnel that we're in right now um, will help us test aircraft. How does it affect the principles of aerodynamics? How does it help us test that? What you can do is you can test by putting the model on that sting I showed yeah. you. You can calculate the lift of the airplane and then the drag, it's the associated drag. And in addition to that, you can also test the stability of the aircraft and how, you, how well you can control it at different flight conditions. And you can also test the aircraft at different angles of attack and find out the different performance and its range of flight. Jeanette, thank you so much. I've learned a lot and hopefully you have too. Um, but let's get out of here before they try and start testing oh, some okay. airplanes here. <laughs> hey kids, look! I know you've all done this one before. Dave was right. All four forces of aerodynamics are acting on my hand. We've got lift. Just like a wing. Lift. Then we've got drag. I feel that resistance. It's like a wall of air. We've also got thrust, which I'm doing. I'm moving the truck. And last is gravity. Oh, I'm tired. Anyway, up next, we're out to Fentress Airfield in Chesapeake, Virginia, to check out the fastest remote control airplanes you'll ever see. Then, we meet a real NASA pilot who flew a plane that didn't even need a runway to take off. Go figure. We'll find out how when Brain Stew returns. By the way, if you're old enough to drive, Keep your eyes on the road at all times. I have to look up because the camera's there. I'm here with my buddy, Lee Person. He is a retired NASA pilot. How are you doing, Lee? Fine, and you? I'm, gl I'm glad you could join us. I'm doing real well. Listen, first of all, NASA, N-A-S-A. N-A-S-A. What does it stand for? National Aeronautics and Space Administration. OK, we've been talking about aerodynamics. And mm -hmm. I, I guess my first question to you as a retired pilot is, have you flown any of these planes that are hanging here in the Virginia Air and Space Center? Several. 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 You want to point them out to me, or? Well, the, the Kestrel was a project airplane when I was at Langley. Okay. Uh, I have flown a, uh, a Pitts like this. And that's a biplane? That's a biplane. Okay. That's an aerobatic biplane. Okay. Not that particular one, but one like it. Okay. Uh, a helicopter like the UH up there, United States Army. Yeah. Uh, 106, which is up here at the top of the thing. An F-4, like hanging right here. Now, you know, I should have asked you which planes haven't you flown here, because <laughs> that's amazing. We talked before and you mentioned that this was your favorite airplane. Can you tell me a little bit why it's your favorite and a little bit ab about it, since you flew one, or this one? Yeah, this, this one. This, this was, exact this, one? This, this, this is the exact one. This oh, was, this wow. was our airplane. This is great. It's a, uh, of course, the airplane is a Hawker Sidley Kestrel. Okay. And uh, the engine that powers it is uh, a Pegasus. And you remember from mythology, Pegasus was the winged horse that could leap straight up into the air. I remember him, like a little unicorn kind like of thing. A unicorn, exactly. Right. Yeah. You turn the nozzles yeah. down, and you do that with a single additional lever in the cockpit. Uh huh. And then when you put thrust on, the airplane will just rise vertically and hover. So it hovers uh, just like a helicopter. Maneuvers in a hover, just like a so helicopter. So the wings at that point, do they are they 
The wings are right where they are. But they don't do anything they at that point. Anything. It's all the engine that yeah. hovers. All the engine now. Okay. Because you have to have airflow over a wing and a tail on an airplane to make it respond to the control inputs, yep. you can't do that in a hover. So they have little thrusters at the wing tips and the nose and the tail. And those little thrusters uh, put the control moments in to make the airplane fly. Okay, then once you're up in the air, do the engines turn back? So you can move Only forward? Only if you do it. And, and then it, you fly it like a regular and then it airplane? it flies like a regular. Superb airplane, superb hovering machine. One of those things that you just sit in it and think what you want it to do, and it does it. Okay, now I know aerodynamic forces um, affect this plane a little different than the other planes that we've seen and talked about. Why? What's the difference? Well, the difference is this airplane will hover. Okay. Uh, normally you have to fly the airplane through the air to get the aerodynamic forces to make it work. Okay. In this airplane, and, and then thrust overcomes the drag of the airplane, and the lift is provided by the air flowing over the wing. In this airplane, in a hover, you turn the nozzles down, and the lift really, over the, the powered lift, the thrust, overcomes the gravity that's pulling the airplane toward the earth. So you, instead of adding throttle to go faster, you add throttle to go up off the ground. Okay, so and you're fighting gravity at that you're point. You're fighting gravity. Once you're in the air and you start to vector the nozzles aft, the airplane will pick up speed and eventually fly on the wing. And when you do that, then it's a normal airplane, thrust, drag, lift, and gravity. Wow, you have just filled my brain with such interesting information. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here, Lee. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Great, great. Thank you. Can we go flying sometime, maybe? Love it. Okay. <laughs>
Yes, they did. Before they build any plane, they have to have a model and make sure they can fly in a, in a wind tunnel. And uh, once they find that they can uh, they can fly in a wind tunnel, they go up and they try to get up on uh, remote control, and they find out if there's any uh, bad characteristics of the airplane, and they go from there to uh, uh, build the actual airplane. Okay, so we were at the Virginia Air and Space Museum. We saw these huge planes, and what you're telling me is what we saw there is similar to what we saw here. They fly exactly oh, the same way. Oh, yeah, exactly the same. In fact, if you see some of the, the airplanes at the Air and Space Museum, you might see them around here somewhere because they're smaller. exact yeah. they're exact duplicates about one quarter the size of the of the original airplane and they fly exactly like the original airplane they have rudder elevator uh, ailerons and throttle control and can fly just about as well or better than the full school aircraft except for the pilots on the ground that's why it's easier to fly uh, those acrobatic uh, routines because your feet are safely on the ground I at think all I times. like this I might get into this I might get into it's, this flying it's, it's an enjoyable <laughs> hobby uh, and we welcome everybody out here to do it that airplanes are aerodynamic? Well, they are. They're streamlined jet... <laughs> They're streamlined shape. Wait. Their streamlined shape makes them fly just like real jet planes. The only difference is you supply the power or thrust. You need three pieces of paper. Eight and a half by 11 will do just fine. And you need some tape, but you don't need the candle though. First, you're gonna make a paper airplane, and this is how you do it. Take the paper and fold it in half long ways. You have to unfold the paper, and then you fold it like this. So the top corners are folded to the center. And then you take each side and fold it into the center again. And then you have to fold it one more time. And then you turn it upside down and fold it in half. And then you unfold it and put a piece of tape over it. And now we're ready to start our experiment. Now you take one of the other two pieces of paper and throw it. As you can see, it didn't go very far. And you take the other piece of paper and put it into a ball and throw it. As you can see, the bottom piece of paper went farther than the first piece of paper. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the paper airplane. Throw it. Here are the results of this experiment. The first piece of paper had the most resistance to the air because it didn't go far. The bottom piece of paper had less resistance, so it went a little bit farther. Of course, our paper airplane went the farthest. Why? Air can easily flow over its shape. That's why it's the most aerodynamic out of all the pieces of paper. Nice job, Alexis. Remember, don't try this in class, just at home. You know, speaking from experience, your teacher would greatly appreciate it. Andy. Remember, you can find a list of the resources we use or one similar at your local library. Hey, just call your librarian. They are so willing and anxious to help you. Well, that's my plane. Got to go catch it. I hope you learned a little bit about aerodynamics. This is Paper Airlines. Last call for Jennifer Pulley. Last call. Oh, I got to run. That's my plane. See you next week on Brain Stew. This is like just drifting right off the ground. Let me show you, OK? This right here works the rudder. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. So I can tell you, your teacher would greatly appreciate it. <laughs>